go. But now you do have to say something in the question box to get a copy of this actual recording. All right, and then I will tell you when you can say something and you'll make sure to get a copy of the slides too, because sometimes you just want the slides to walk through everything. Today, we are gonna be talking about how you can power your job search with Google tools, because there are so many tools out there. You may know Google search, but you may not know everything that you have available to you in your free Google account. So I'm not talking about Google Workspace, what used to be called Google Suite. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about everything that's 100% free with your personal Gmail account or your Google account. You do not have to have a Gmail account, but if you have your own email and you'd like a Google account, I can show you how to do that, a free Google account, and you still have say, the same access to all of these free tools, okay? So this is how you can, again, get to closed captions. You'll see that at the bottom of every slide if you're not sure which URL or you feel like you need that. And then this is me. All right, so if you want to tag or post, if you'll use the hashtag grow with Google, it lets everybody know that you're leveling up your skills. But most importantly, it lets the Google team know that this matters to you and it encourages them to create more workshops and webinars like this, which is what I love for our Google partners to have. You can tag me on Twitter, I'm often active there or on Instagram, and I will share and repost or in my stories, whatever you share. All right, everybody ready to take a deep dive in? Let's dive on in then. And let's talk about how we job hunt now. Because we are in hybrid workplaces, sometimes we have fewer word of mouth opportunities. You know, I work with a remote team and I have worked remotely since 2014. So for me, when March 2020 came, it was second nature. It was foreign to everybody else. I had every video call tool ever, but before then, if I asked somebody to do a video call, most often they were just like, oh, let's just do a quick phone call or can you come out and, and let's have coffee can you meet with me now of course video call is the first choice but because of that we may not have the word of mouth opportunities that we used to have when we were going out to lunch together or catching a quick drink together or just there you know doing something at the office together plus there are more distractions when we're at home we have our home roles and if you did not go hybrid in you know March 2020 if you didn't go completely remote then because my husband's an essential worker so he didn't go completely remote then uh, but we do know there's lots of distractions at home and sometimes it's hard to remember that you're in the work mode or more often than not what we see is that people stay forever in the remote in the work world even if it's eight o'clock nine o'clock at night because you're right there and your home is your office sometimes you are drawn in right away and you're doing things that you would never just go back in to work for okay so we see that happening now because of that i do want to help you hone your job search skills that's everything that we're talking about today okay so the tips for working from home let me just go over this briefly because this will help you in your sanity to give yourself also some grace as you become more either able as you're looking in your job search to look at different job opportunities that are remote or even getting better in your search because you do need a routine come up with a routine keep a really dedicated work spot find that spot that you work at you know as i said i've been remote since 2014 so i struggled in 2014 on you know i saw dirty dishes i wanted to put a load of laundry in don't work don't do that when you're working when you're you're working when you're not you're not okay schedule your breaks because you do need to give yourself some breaks. There's a reason why I'm using a standing desk. It's because I didn't give myself breaks. And so I ran into this whole neck thing, which means now I'm in a standing desk, okay? Don't do that to yourself. It's painful, it's time consuming, you don't wanna do it. Make sure you have the tools that you need, everything within arm's length. We do know that most people will lose about 15 minutes in any day searching for things because they have things out of arm's length. Like you have maybe a stapler on your area that you're working and you haven't used a stapler in a year. So why is it they're taking prime real estate? The same thing with your digital files. Make sure they're organized and easy to find. I've seen a lot of people, when they show me their actual screenshot of their, their, their desktop screen, it's amazing that they can see anything because it's just covered with a lot of little file folders, which means you have to search. Do know that if you don't have to search for 15 minutes in every day, over a course of a year, you saved yourself 10 working days. Imagine if you could get yourself back 10 days unencumbered time. So do have a to-do list. Give others grace as well as yourself. And remember, when you're at work, you're at work. Okay, so let's go in here and talk about how you can track your job search, right? Let's talk about how you can find opportunities with Google search because there are more opportunities than just regular search. Then also, how can you create a resume with Google Docs? 
let me know if you already have a resume set up, right? And if you've ever used Google Docs, let me know in the question box. Also, how you can give an interview with Google Meet. I'd love to hear if you've used Google Meet. So let me know if you've used Google Docs and let me know if you use Google Meet, okay? Let me know in that question box that's on the chunky right-hand side control panel. If you just walked in and you didn't know where to find that, that's where you can speak to me and it is the question box. And then we'll also talk about where you can learn from anywhere because there are so many free resources to you to level up your skills. Let's say you're job searching and somebody asks for you to do uh, or have experience with Google Sheets or Excel. Maybe you don't have that, but you do need to learn that. All right, so I do see, Ratanja, you do, thank you. I'm glad you use those tools. Anybody else wanna say? Perfect, Steve, glad you're using Google Docs. Awesome. All right, so how you can track your job search in Google Sheets. Now, remember what I said about when you have to work around things that are close by, really limiting what you need immediate access to, then it's hard. You have to search for things. You're taking a lot of time to work in what's close to you. And I truly am somebody that does believe in the organization skills that you see in a discovery center of a kindergarten classroom. Okay, because there's a reason they put everything together. You have the learning center, the home center, the music center, the reading center. And that is because when the children are ready to switch or when you're ready to clean up, you can tell the kiddos, come on, let's do this, clean up your area and they move to the next one. But everything is within arm's length when they're ready to do something. I encourage you to do the same thing when you're job searching, having everything together. Because if you're having to switch gears, every single time to say, I saw an opportunity. Now let me craft a resume. Now let me think about what was that experience? Was it in August of 2019 or October of 2019 when I left that place? Now you start going through all of this emotion and time is still moving swiftly. And understand, time is everything when you are job searching and applying. In fact, we were just looking for a web developer. In fact, I did that just on Thursday. Thursday, I put it out on LinkedIn. Within a matter of 15 minutes, we had over 114 people apply. Of that, those are the only 114 that I looked at. I didn't want to look at any other resumes or to go through any other potential interviews because they were the ones who were right there most excited. Well, imagine that you were at the 16th minute because you were trying to figure out where it was that you were working before and the timing to be able to put in that application and their resume. Make sense? All right, so somebody says they have a resume, but no experience with Google Docs. So let me show you this, okay? First, you do have to be in your Google account. Now, if you've got a Gmail account, you're golden, you're there. Everything that I'm gonna show you, you'll be able to access and see. If you don't, you do not have to have a Gmail account. What you'll do is you'll go to this URL right here. You see that right at the bottom left-hand corner. And what you'll do is you'll sign up for an account. You'll use your email address. It does not change it to Gmail. You do not have to have Gmail. It is your email address. You'll create a password. And like any other password protected site online, you'll use your email address and this password to log in and access the tools, which is what you're seeing animated in front of you in the slide. So when you are already in your Gmail account or your free Google account, what you'll do is you'll go to that top right hand corner and what you see is the app keypad, right? The app keypad, which we, trainers lovingly call the Google Waffle is right up there and that's where you can access all the free apps, okay? So you're gonna go in that top right-hand corner. Now, I know sometimes this can be really tiny even though the animation is really, really good. So I'm gonna throw this up here real quick and let me see if this will play with me for a minute. Let me go bigger here. All right. So what you're seeing here is an actual Gmail account in front of you, all right? So this is my trainer demo Gmail account. You will see if you're in your Gmail account, that app keypad, you see that there at the top right hand corner where I'm hovering right now, you'll click on that and you can see all of the different free Google apps that you have available to you. You'll see Google Docs in here. That's the blue one. Google Sheets is the green one. Docs works just like Word. No licensing fee or anything. That's with you 100% free with any of your free Google accounts. Sheets is just like Excel, so I'll show you that in just a moment. Now, if you're in a Google account, let's say you did not want a Gmail account, so you're going to be in a Google account. This is what, and let me make that bigger because I am broadcasting, so I know that can be tiny in a broadcast, but this is what it'll look like when you log in if you don't have a Gmail account, but you do get a free Google account, so you will land here. So do not be concerned that you don't land here because that's a Gmail account. 
you're going to land here and yet you can still go up to that app keypad right there at the top right hand corner next to your name or your initial and you're going to click on that keypad and it will expose everything that you can do to be able to access all of the free Google tools okay let me minimize that get that out of the way let's go back to our presentation so when you are creating a new Google Sheet, what you'll do is you'll go to Google Drive. That's the first thing. And I see that in the animation, but I don't think it showed you how to get to Google Drive. So let me show you that real quick, okay? Let me bring that back up again. Again, this is your free Google account. We click on the keypad here and you'll go to Google Drive. That's the primary color triangle you see right here. If you're in your Gmail account, again, go to the app keypad, you'll look for the tri primary color triangle. You'll click on Drive, it will open up another tab. Let me make that bigger. And the only reason I like to start here is even though you can bring up Google Docs and Google Sheets from your Gmail account or your free Google account, I like to start here because when your things are saved and Google Drive is always saving, the thing that happens, perfect. Oh, you see it. Okay, you found it. All right, perfect. You do see the visual. All right, good. I'm glad everybody's seeing this then. So what you will see happening here is if you are saving things because Google Drive always saves, which is what I like. So I don't say it, I shouldn't say if. You are always saving things if you're using Google Drive. Then what happens is a lot of people don't know where to find it. And it is here in Google Drive. So I always like to start here. Then you can click new. Then you can see there's Google Docs and Google Sheets. Go here to the arrow, hover over this. It'll bring down a drop down menu and you can do a blank spreadsheet or you can also save from a template, okay? In this instance, we're gonna start from a blank spreadsheet. So I'll show you that real quick. Let's go back to our animation here. Let me give that a chance to, for the internet to catch up with us. So when you create a new Google Sheet, you'll see you click new. You'll see the Google Sheets actually come up in front of you. And you'll see that it's a blank spreadsheet. So you can rename it up here at the very top. Just start typing here and you can immediately change that name. There's nothing else you need to do except hit enter. And now it is saved because Google Drive is always saving everything. So you don't have to worry about power surges or anything else happening that you'll lose any of your information. Everything's saved. And that's what I do love about Google Sheets because I have used other products been out of range and then lost something that I was working on uh, because of that. Or I live in rural West Texas, so a power surge is inevitable and you can easily lose um, access to your system then. I don't have to worry that way about that with the Google tools. So the Google Sheet basics, some of the things you can see here is first, when you're looking at rows, rows are actually numbered. So look there at the left-hand side of the sheet, rows are numbered. When we go to columns, those are lettered. So when we are looking at the address of a cell, so a cell is the rectangle right here that you see under in each of these columns and rows. When you look at an address of a cell, for example, job position, that text right there, job position, is in the address A, which is the column it's in, row one. A1 is exactly where it's located at. So you see actually row one, houses a lot of the titles of the different columns here, okay? So you see the columns, you see the rows. You're going to create a job search sheet. Remember what I said about organize everything like you were in a five-year-old kindergarten discovery center, and here's how we're going to organize this so that we're swift and nimble when opportunity presents itself. Now, what you'll do next is you can now put information in your job search. Think about what it is that you're most interested in when you are job searching. So first, we're going to job search in one, let's say 15, 20 minute swoop. We'll fill out everything in our job search sheet, which will be exactly the company name. Maybe we want the URL where we can apply, any notes about what really stood out for us that, oh, you know, my skill as a sales rep is really gonna come hone in here. So we can put all of that in our notes. We might even, in one of these columns, link to the resume that we use because I am a big fan of customizing your resume. In fact, that's a power tip. People who are really good at job searching and fast about getting another job know that it's not one resume fits all. The resume needs to be tailored to the actual position. And you're going to have custom resumes. It's going to be variations of your resumes that come up. Now, let me stop a myth right away that your resume is the autobiography of or the chronological order of everything that you do. It is not. 
Your resume is the highlight reel. The job of the resume is to get you the appointment, to get the person who's looking at your resume to say, tell me more, I'd like to know more. It is not to get you the job. No one is hired just straight from the resume. It is the highlight reel and remember that. I know when people don't know that because their resumes are two, three, four pages long. It doesn't matter. I graduated from college 30 plus years ago. I could have a resume that's three or four pages long. I never go past one page because I know when people are looking at resumes, most recruiters, most decision makers, supervisors, even business owners only spend six to seven seconds on a resume before they decide, yes, I want somebody to tell me more or no into the no pile and go on to the next one. So that's all you have to gather their attention. So if you're organizing your job search, you see animated in front of you, step four, how to put things together that you want that's most important to you in your job search decision making. You can format the tracker here too. Hopefully everybody does see that because I do see Steve that you were saying you didn't see the visual, but everybody, if you could just confirm with me in that question box that you can see that. And also if you'll make a comment there, I'll make sure you get a copy of today's slides, which will have all the animation, everything that you need here. Perfect, Angie, awesome, thank you. Tiffany, thank you, thank you. So you can organize this however you see fit, making it easier for you to find all the information you need when the opportunity presents itself. So how do we find those opportunities, all right? Any questions before here, before I go from here, all right? Oh, absolutely, just make a comment there and you'll get a copy of the slides. It will be tomorrow because it takes usually a day before the actual video renders and I don't wanna fill your inbox so I send both at the same time, a copy of the video and a copy of the slides, okay? Oh, absolutely, I'll make sure you get that. So we're all familiar with Google search. You can actually search up at the very top in the URL address bar, or you can search right here, like you're seeing in front of you. And if you'll just say jobs near me, most of the time it's picking up the IP address of where you're actually located, or maybe where your Wi-Fi is connected, and it'll bring up exactly your location. So if you're looking here, that's great. Now what you'll see, other than just the job search, the regular Google search, you'll see this blue bar come across. This is the job search bar. This is where Google actually brings in over 2,500 different, different recruiting, different sites that actually have opportunities listed and brings it all together at your fingertips. So you're not having to click and go find at every different location, right? Glassdoor, someplace else into LinkedIn. Everything's right here. And you can search and make sure your search is focused by putting in jobs near you. So if you're in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm in Midland, Texas, I would put that there. You can also go in and put other possible job opportunities here. So what you're searching, maybe you're looking for jobs for veterans or jobs with no degree, or maybe jobs not in Memphis. Maybe you're looking to move to Dallas, Texas, wherever you'd like to move to. Maybe not in Indianapolis. Maybe you're headed to Carmel, right? Oh, absolutely, Angie, you'll get a copy of today's slides. So as you're reviewing the opportunities, when you see this blue search, so when you're doing that in Google search, you'll see this blue bar search. If you click on this, it'll take you here and you can see the options that you can apply to this position. You can also see in salary info, you could see the type of job that it is. And you can also see a lot of different information that can help you decide whether or not this job makes your job search tracker list because it's something that you really do want to do. All right, so using these filters, we can really focus our time. Remember what I said about time is of the essence when you're searching. So you can look here and maybe you're a sales rep. So you, instead of just saying marketing in general, you do wanna look at sales. Maybe you're a delivery driver. Maybe you'd like to work remotely from home. You can decide all of those different filters and apply those to help limit and really focus and make your job search more effective, okay? So you can see those narrow results there. You can also decide, let's say you wanna work from home, work remotely, maybe there's hybrid work too, you can make those decisions. If you even want to set the miles away, let's say you're okay with working away from home and outside in the public, if you're good with that, or you're good for either option, you can select that, but you're not gonna go more than 15 miles out because you like to stay close and you don't wanna spend all day in traffic because you might be inundated with that. Or you could be a driver and you love that, so you're okay with 60 miles out, all right? And you can make those decisions here. Then also you could look at anything that you need. Remember what I said about no degrees. You can look if there's, if there's jobs available for people that do not have to worry about having a college degree. You can filter there. Those filters can actually be found in requirements when you're using that blue search area. 
You can even look at veteran jobs. Remember what I said about I have the great opportunity to work with military veterans or those transitioning into civilian life. So what we do know with veterans is you do have a special code. So you have your, mid, your military occupational specialty code. Boy, I tried to say that so fast. Sorry to mess up on you, Fenella. Military Occupational Specialty Code. That's your MOS. So every job in the military has an MOS code. You'll just put your code here, and it will bring up every position that you're qualified for, that there's available. Okay, and then again, you can narrow it down by saying, I only want to work in ones which are working remotely, or maybe only those that are 10 miles from my home. But now you can look quickly like that and not worry about whether or not you make that match. And you'll even find a lot of employers who are very much military or military community friendly because they do know that there's so much transitioning that happens when you move base to base. Now you can also save a job to apply later. You'll see this right there. You see that save? So that's that bookmark, you're familiar with that, that's how you can save things and now go back and look at the ones you actually saved and start applying to those. You can also use this link though, that link actually goes straight to this position, customer service rep with AT&T in Houston. So if you want to use this link, what I like to do is use that link and now put that on that job sheet tracker in my Google Sheets so I can go straight to it. I don't have to worry about going through this or looking through all of my saved and bookmarked items. I'm just going straight from the sheet. Makes it nice and easy. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also set alerts. So right down here at the bottom, you see the opportunity to be able to set alerts and those alerts can be something that's alerting you um, right when they come in and that's the alert function that I actually, or the alert timing that I actually encourage people to use if you can. Now, sometimes you may work and you can't do that. So maybe you want it um, halfway through the day, at the end of the day, once a week, at the end of the month. I will tell you though, timing is everything, right? So keep that in mind when you see those alerts and it'll be sent to you in an email. So let me show you that real quick. And I'm gonna drag a live demo out there. Let me expand that out what that looks like in your email. I'm gonna show you a Gmail account, but it will look the same in your own email. You're not gonna just see it in your Gmail account, but you see this, 10 new jobs for sales jobs near me. When I click on that, it shows me the blue search area and it comes up with everything that fits the criteria that I selected for this and set the alert for. You can also see I have several alerts because I had the alert set up to um, give me an alert whenever something comes available. For example, on March 11th, there were several opportunities that became available in our area. So I set it that way. That is what it looks like in your email or Gmail, depending on which you use. So you can set those alerts up and define whatever notification schedule you'd like, but I encourage you Immediate is always better. And now you can enter those opportunities. Remember what I said about that share link I showed you a moment ago? You can put all the information here and also the link right to the opportunity. So when you're ready to apply, so right now you're in your search phase, you're documenting this, now you're in the apply phase. But let's talk about your Google Docs. Any questions about that before we move on? Let me know in the question box, okay? And absolutely, I see some people commenting here that they like a copy of today's slides. Absolutely, just make a comment there and I'll make sure you get that. So let's talk about creating a resume with Google Docs because if it was a surprise to you that your resume is a highlight reel, I want to give you a little bit more power tips that will help you with your resume. First, you can use Google Docs, which is what I like to do because remember what I said about Google Drive always saving? And what's nice is you can create this from a template. So Google Docs has a whole slew of free templates that you can use for your resume. You can choose the format that fits for you. You click on it and when you do click on it, it then populates within your Google Drive and you can now customize everything for you. So let me show you that now that you've seen the animation. Let me show you that in real time. Okay, let me bring up this again and let me give that a chance to render and populate. Okay, I see that showing to you. So when I'm in here, remember what I said about you're gonna hit, hit click here on the Google Apps, click on that primary color triangle, you'll get to Google Drive. All right, you're gonna click New. You'll go to Google Docs, hover over this arrow here, you'll see blank document or from a template. I'm gonna say from a template it will bring up this, the template gallery. Now, let me make this bigger because I know that's super small. All right, as I'm looking here 
at the template gallery, you'll see all the resumes. Now there's lots of things in here too, cover letters, um, gosh, even if you needed to do meeting notes and agenda notes, everything's here for you and this is 100% free. When you click on this, you do not change anything in the template gallery. It brings in the template into your Google Drive, which is why I wanted to show you Google Drive first. So for example, let's say I like the Swiss resume. Let's just say that really hits my style. So I click on it, see how it's syncing, and now it will bring all of that up here to your own resume. Now you can actually alter and personalize this however you see fit. So if I could say, this is Maria's basic resume. I can click there, hit enter. If I want to make sure that I can find it in my drive, which is where this will be saved at, but I want it at the very top, then I can star it right here. If I already have a folder set up, then I can click here to move it to the folder. So I can want to send it to my resume folder. I can absolutely do that here. And I can just move it here because this is a basic resume where I'm going to dump a lot of information that I will copy and paste and customize for every resume that I need. In fact, I encourage you to do that because this is, again, a power user tip. And this is what the really good quick job searchers do. So you could put and customize everything here. See, I could just decide if I don't want to put my phone number in there, I can just delete that. If I don't like the color orange, I can go up here. You'll see this is very familiar, very similar to Word. When you look at the control panel at the very top, everything that you're doing here, you can choose font, you can choose all of that, okay? So once you've done that, now you can customize this resume. But what I love is you can go here to file, make a copy, and now you can copy that resume. So let's say I'm applying for a sales position, uh, but that basic resume was all about my marketing background. So it was really talking about, I was a marketing director, that I'm used to leading a team, that I'm used to leading you know, TikTok managers, influencers, and all of these influencer managers. That might be my expertise, but in this instance, I'm applying to be a sales representative. So I really wanna talk about hitting sales quota, leading a sales team, making sure that we set annual goals, quarterly goals. So I might be covering that a little bit more. So I might tweak this resume a little bit to really focus on on that again your application is the chronological order of everything that you're doing your resume this is the highlight reel everybody okay so this is just how well do you match because you want somebody in six to seven seconds to be able to pick that up and then what's nice is you can send them the link to this actual resume so you can share it and you can share this link to let's see we want everybody to see the link but they just want the we just want them to view it we don't want them to be able to edit it, but we just want them to view it. So you can do it that way. Or if you don't want to do that, you can also download it in Word, PDF, or even set it up as a web page. But here's the thing. I encourage you, if you're sending it to somebody this way, you're not sending it as a link, send it as a PDF. That stands for Portable Document Format understand that if you have Word, let's say, or they have Word on their machine, so you're downloading it as Word, whatever the margins are that they use, yours is going to adjust to. So you could be using a one inch margin on the top and bottom and a half inch on the side. You made it look so nice. And now you're gonna send it to somebody who uses a one inch on the sides and only a half inch in the top. All of a sudden your spacing's off. You've lost the integrity of the document. And when people see this and see it's not laid out nice and you've got big gaps, they wonder if you take much pride in your work, right? So, so usually they'll move on. Do yourself a favor, download it in PDF portable document format, okay? So what I'm gonna show you here, uh, let me see, I just hid my, there we go, let me take this out of your way here, but make sure I can see that. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. We talked about how you can populate and formulate your resume. I showed you that, how to do that and demoed that in real time. We also talked about how you can customize the text and format that text, making it custom to you. Don't use more than two different fonts though, okay? Because remember, you need to be able to capture somebody's uh, attention within two or three seconds. You've only got six to seven seconds, and when you get two or three fonts or two or three colors, that really changes things. Oh, absolutely, Patricia. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad that you're enjoying it, and this is helpful to you. Now, you can also insert comments. So I didn't show you this, but this is one of the tools that I like, because if you're working, let's say, with Dress for Success Indianapolis, and you're wanting to ask somebody on your team there to take a look at this resume and give you some feedback because you don't want to send it out without putting another pair of eyes on it, right? We can sometimes proof something a hundred times and then all of a sudden, as soon as we send it out, 
that's when the glaring error shows up. It's like the requirement for something to show up is to be that we sent it to the employer, the job that we wanted more than anything. And now there's that glaring mistake. So you might want to share it with somebody. And what the animation is showing you here is how you can make comments there to say, hey, could you look at this? Um, does this sound right? Have I worded this right? Is this something that would be important to you? So you could put all of those, those comments there within your actual Google Doc. And I can show you that if you'd like, just let me know in the comment box, I can, or in the question box, let me know, and I can go back and do a live demo of that if the animation wasn't clear enough. You can also, as I said, make different copies to customize to different jobs, which is what I love to do. And then, of course, you can share that resume. I showed you that real quickly, but this animation is actually showing you how to go through there and share that with everybody. And also, if you'd like to share it even by email address, you can put in their email address so you can share it by link or you can put their email address and decide how much of a level of editing you want them to do on that actual document or do you just want them to view that? Let's say that you just want it to be sending it to a recruiter or to apply and so maybe you don't want to, them to be able to edit that. But it could be, as you're seeing here in the actual uh, demonstration, you'll see that you could be asking for, how could I improve this? Would you take a look at this? All right. Now you can, all, as I said, copy that. You can also paste the link there into your spreadsheet. And now you know exactly which resume you applied with. So let's say you have five different versions of your resume. You get that all important email or call of tell me more. Now that happens and you're wondering which resume did I send them? And we have to go into memory. Don't worry about that. Don't clutter your mind with that. You've got more important things to think about. Put it here into your Google, into your job search sheet or your Google sheet, put it into your job search tracker. Click exactly what resume it is, and that you will now be on the same page they are when you're ready to talk to them, right? You haven't skipped a beat. Any questions so far? Let me know in that question box, because we're going to finish up here with talking about Google Meet. Let me know, have you used Google Meet? Because Google Meet was one of those favorite tools that I had that's actually um, geared up on March 2020. And the reason I loved it so much is because my parents are in their 80s. I am so fortunate to have them still in my life. But it, when lockdown and everything happened, um, we had Mother's Day come up, right? And so they've never used a video call whatsoever. They've never done that. And to ask them to download something and to subscribe to it or anything, they did have Gmail accounts. I was good in making sure that they had Gmail accounts. So I told them just click on this calendar invite and you'll be taken to Google Meet. It operates just like Zoom. It's 100% free. There's no, no cost. We can all get in there. So even my sister who's in London, another sister in Chicago, my brother who's in San Diego, we were all able to get together with all the grandkids and have a wonderful Mother's Day. And it was seamless for my parents who always look to me for tech support but they were able to do this all on their own and that's why I love Google Meet. A lot of employers are using this now because it is right within their fingertips. It's 100% free and you can use this to showcase your screen, have a meeting or have an interview, okay? Yes, Patricia, it's super easy. So when you're in there, you'll see all the controls happen at that bottom side there, right there. So you have the microphone that you can use. You have that you can turn your screen on and off, your mic on and off, right? So you have all of that available to you. Plus you can also, let me show you down here, right at the very bottom right-hand corner of that little fake laptop screen, you'll see there's a little arrow there so you can present too. You can also make comments here to each other or to the whole group and you can see how many people are in the meeting there. So it's nice. I even have meetings this way or even catch up with my kiddos or my sisters um, if we're not uh, interested in jumping on the phone at that time or we're just not located together because we physically aren't. We're all in different. That's the benefit of being Air Force brats. Sorry, we live all over the world. So the important thing when you're interviewing, no matter what platform you use, is to look directly in the camera. Now, I could look at my different lights. I could look at what's happening on my screen. You see me looking at what's happening on my screen here. But if I look at the camera, then that's giving good eye contact. And that still is very important when we are interviewing, especially here in the US. So for example, looking right here, I'm looking straight to, I know where that's at. If I look a little bit off, which is the little light that's right here, I'm looking a little bit off. I'm not making good eye contact or like a lot of people do, they're looking at their laptop screen. So this is what you see. You see the top of their head, okay? You wanna give good eye contact. 
also speak slowly and clearly, not as excited and as passionate as I have, unless of course passion is what they want you to deliver. If they want that to the job, then bring it on. Show your real you, pay attention to lighting. Right now I'm really, really fortunate because I just have my overhead light here in the room and one loom cube. Normally I have two on, but since I switch things up, I'm trying one right now and it seems to all right be all right as far as the kind of um, lighting that we have, but you don't want shadows falling in your face. You don't want to be that person that's there in the dark. And then also look at your background. A neutral background is better if you can. We on the Google team, because we all, or most of us, all the trainers are still 100% remote. We're still showcasing what we're showing in the back because we do want to show you that we're not in our Google offices. We are in our actual home offices. And then of course, dress professionally or dress for the position. I'm normally a suit and high heel person, but you see, I'm also a Google team member and Google team members, we wear t-shirts. That's what looks like you fit into the team. So dress for whatever position that you're going to be interviewing for. You want the person interviewing you to see you there. You just automatically feel like you're a good fit. And that's what they're looking for, fit, because they don't want to upset the culture or the, the makeup of their company on already who's there and who are the vetted team members. They want somebody who's a good fit, okay? So practice too. Even if you're not going to utilize Google Meet, you might want to use this to practice with a friend because practice does make sure that it's good and perfect. You now feel really comfortable. You're not worrying about which button do I press? You know, am I connected on the right one here? Am I looking at the camera? You're not doing all of that first time when you're speaking to somebody at the first time because every interviewer knows that you can stand on your tippy toes and look amazing for 30 and 45 minutes. And so they know you're going to be at your best and they really do judge whether or not you're good at what you do, you have the right kind of work ethic. Um, also, if you are working well with the actual interview like this, or even if you have the digital skills that you need, okay? Any questions? Let me see, let me go back here. So I showed you how to use the job tracker in Google Sheets and how to set that up. I also showed you how to use Google Search and what that looks like when you're searching for the blue bar. Let me show you that in real time, just in case, because I do, don't want it to um, change on you, because sometimes it does. So when you're going here and I go to, I'm gonna go to Google, dot com. All right, let me make that bigger. Go here. And let me say, I'm going to say, oopsie, jo it already knows me. Jobs. Okay, so I'm going to say jobs in Midland, Texas. See how it's the lighter color blue. So they've changed the color of the blue from when we did the slides, which is always happening, can happen in 24 hours. Click here. When I click here, see how it populates with everything? That's how I found this area where I can now filter and say, oh, I want to look at, you know, admin office. I want to look at customer service. And I'm really interested in working from home. Okay, so that's what I'm most looking at. And so I can bookmark things. Remember what I said about job alerts being down here? I can set that up, the job alert. Send it daily if I want that. Or I can change that too by going here and adjusting that or I can bookmark it here or use the link here to be able to share that, copy that, and put that into my Google Job Tracker Sheet, okay? So that's how you find this. And then also, we talked about Google Docs for our resume. Never download, download and send a resume in Word or Google Doc format. Always put it in PV or downloaded Google Doc format, either send it as a link or as an actual Google Doc. And then how to use Google Meet. Use that to even practice on a video call or video interview if you've never done that. So here's a quick checklist to get you going. All right, this will re really get you to apply what you learn. So there's a myth out there that knowledge is power. It's not. Applied knowledge is power. My friend Jo says it best when she says, Knowledge is knowing that the tomato is a fruit. Applied knowledge is not putting it in fruit salad. Really, it's important to apply what you learned here today. So let me know in the question box, what's your first thing to try on the to-do list? Is it to set up your Google account, your free Google account? Is it to go into your current free Google account or Gmail account and find those Google Sheets? Look at the template, maybe look at your resume, look at Google Docs. Is it to try Meet? 
Um, is it to download a resume or even a document for the first time in PDF format? What are you going to do first? I'd love to know. Let me know in the question box because you've just spent the last 45, 47 minutes learning something new. And I really do want you to get some value from that instead of just great information. And then you go on down the road thinking, I really do need to do that, but you don't. So I am going to encourage and push you and coach you into, you know what, what are you going to apply? What's the first thing? Because if you identify it, then the chances more than likely you will get it done. And if we really do focus to get it done, understand focus is a is a, an actual acronym. Follow one course until successful. You truly will have a successful job search. And I know this because I've worked with people who are not just transitioning from the military, but those who are transitioning out of jobs that they've done 30 or 40 years. They've never done a resume in their life. They've never job searched. And they are fast and quick to do this once they have these skills in place. And the way they get that is by applying it and practicing it. All right, so I see some people are going to try Google Me. Awesome, all right, yay, absolutely. Get familiar with it, get comfortable, so you'll know instantly where your camera eye is. Are you pulling from the right microphone? Is it hearing you? Is it trying to pull from your speaker? You know, sometimes technology does weird things, so double check that. Some are going to actually put their resume into Google Docs. Now, if you are working, let's say, or you're applying for something where they want to show or see that you have the skills to be able to, maybe you need the digital skill set to be able to apply for that job, you might want to use these applied digital skills. So if you look at that bottom left-hand corner, here you can go to this URL if you want to take a snapshot of it before you get today's copy of the actual webinar the recording and the slides you might want to go look at this already you can go through this and really become the sheet Google sheet expert so as I said it's like Excel so there's formulas in place there are a lot of small businesses that I know that actually use Google sheets for all of their payroll so there's a lot of formulas running in there a lot of macros you can learn how to set that up and you can go almost as far as certification and do this 100% free. So you can go up to the point of the certification test and do this free. Now, if you do the certification test, it is $79 because there is a fee that Google has to pay for that. But now you get a certificate that you can file with a job search or with a, a, an employer with a job. You can let them know, yes, I'm certified and I'm skilled in this. But if you don't need the certification, you just need the skills, then you can go to all of these applied digital skills lessons, 100% free, go through the workbook, go through the video, and really fine tune your skills within any of these tools, okay? So take a look at that. Also, I encourage you to download Primer. Primer is a great tool. You can download it in iOS, which is iPhone, so that's in the App Store or the Google Play Store for Android, and there's a lot of lesson plans already in there, so you don't need internet connection once you download it. What you'll have are lessons updated that help you, and you can choose lessons like how to work remotely, how to set up your office, like I was explaining in a Discovery Center way, Again, making it more organized, saving you time, significant time, energy, and money, which is really what putting a system is about. Then there's also Google Career Certificates. If you're not familiar with this, do get with the Google partner who invited you, so that's Dress for Success Indianapolis, because what you can do, and you can actually see more here if you go to this URL, is there are several career certificates that you can become involved with to actually get your certification. So it could be that you're doing coding and design, could be in project management, maybe it's even in understanding data and analytics. It is normally about three to six months it takes to complete this course. It's $35 or $39, I'm sorry, $39 a month. Um, you do need to pay for this, but if you can finish it in one month, more power to you, then you just pay the 39. But what happens once you're certified, Google has a little bit over 300 different employers and Google being one of them that use this pool of people to pull from whenever they're job searching. So they do look to those who are certified first. So it's really nice because I think there's a... Um, 79% placement rate, it might be higher. Um, I'd have to double check that to be sure, but I think that's the amount of placement rate of people who come through the, the certificate certification program and again you can do it in your own pace at your own place but it could be that you take a month to do it but on average it takes anywhere from three to six months depending on which program that you enroll in. Okay so you have that available to you too and then always you have your Google partner, Trust for Success Indianapolis. If you'll go here to this website, so this is grow.google. When you go to this website, you'll see all of the different trainings that they have access to that they themselves, or they can bring me in, a Google trainer, to come in to actually teach you and help support you in being able to hone up your digital skills, 
either as a small business, as a job seeker, or maybe even as a student, okay? So take a look at this to see what's available and reach out to Dress for Success Indianapolis for any help. All right, so we are nine minutes before the top of the hour and I'm gonna give you the money slide here. If you do wanna take one quick screenshot before you have to go and before we finish up, this is it. This is everything that I just brought up. Do know that you'll get a copy of today's slides and a copy of the recording so you can slow me down, speed me up wherever you need to and repeat. I am so happy to be here, but I want to make sure I answer your questions. So feel free to ask questions. I will stop the recording now.